We are an overly busy society. We go a hundred miles an hour, here, there, and thither, uh, trying to figure out what it is we need to get done. We're constantly on the move. Chasing kids here and there that they might be involved in everything. When, when we get so tired, things happen. And they're not always good things. We make bad mistakes and we make bad decisions and, and, and we can just get wore out. The year our son got married, we had been through Advent. He got married, I think, the 19th of Jan, 13th of January. I never can remember. But, uh, so we had his wedding. I preached on Sunday after his wedding. Uh, a little over a week later, we left for Israel for 10 days. And you know what that does to your body uh, when you travel internationally. Uh, we got back on a Friday night, got up and, and we got into Kansas City and we got up the next morning we went to see the kids because they were kind of concerned about us being gone and we hadn't seen them and our daughter was a little beside herself. We drove home Sunday afternoon, stopped at the hospital to see a really good friend and church member who was dying of cancer. Got home, went to bed got, and got called out in the middle of the night because she had died and so I went to her hospital and we planned the service and come Wednesday night we went to bed and I was tired and I was we pray every night when we go to bed before we shut before we say good night one of us prays and I was praying that night and all of a sudden I was asleep talking praying and I was asleep. We exhaust ourselves. And sometimes we even exhaust ourselves in the name of serving Christ. Sometimes we need to stop and think. The other day I heard on the radio, but sometimes we get so tired and it's a tired that sleep won't help us recover from. Now that tired that I had, a, a good long rest could help me recover. But sometimes we get so tired, and it's a tired that sleep can't even renew us from. And so where do we get that, that renewal? And, and I started thinking about that the other day. And this is not the scripture I'd picked out earlier. I, I, called, I changed up the scriptures this week. But I thought about this scripture from Isaiah that I've read at many, many funerals. It just kind of uh, speaks to you in that time. And so I want to read from Isaiah 40, verses 21 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has he not told you? From the beginning, have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and his people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princesses to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither. And a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom you will, will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. 
I've been thinking about that scripture this week, and I was just doing a little search the other day, and I found this thing that compared different birds to our Christian life. And it was the chicken and the vulture and peacock and pe pelican and different ones. Now, I'm not going to go into all of those, but what I found was the characteristics of an eagle that kind of speaks to us. And the eagle's used several times in the scriptures as a way to soar in our faith. And so the, the first one the first characteristic was their solitude. They live on the rock. Now we need to live on the rock. Jesus Christ is our rock. He's the one we need to live on. He's the one we need to build on. Psalm 62, 1 and 2 says, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. He lives on the rock. He doesn't live in the hen house where there's constant flapping and, and bickering that takes place. The eagle chooses the solitude so they can, they can hear the creator. If we seek solitude, solitude, we will hear. That's the one great thing about on Sunday night when we come here to pray. You know, we have a little soft music going in the back, but it's not loud, it's not, and not everybody prays, and we don't, a lot of our time is just sitting in silence. And believe me, it's hard. But believe me, it's good. Sitting in silence with God, just listening, just listening for what he might say. Number two characteristic, the eagle's source. The eagle is almost completely dependent on the winds for survival. It can't reach its home, its food, or fly above its enemies without the wind. Similarly for Christians, we need the Holy Spirit, the currents of the Holy Spirit, to carry us through and to carry us on our journeys. We have to learn to lean into the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit guide us into the ways of Jesus. We cannot live a victorious life without the Holy Spirit as our guide. If you try to do it without God, without the Holy Spirit, you're going to stumble, you're going to fall, you're going to have problems. The eagle uses the wind to get around. Rides on the waves of the wind. And the wind is our God, the Holy Spirit, is what we need to ride on. We need the Holy Spirit in our life. I, I'll never forget, it wasn't until after 1986 in the church that I started hearing about the Holy Spirit. When Bob Stout came to, to Morganville and started teaching about the Holy Spirit. And the difference that makes when we lean into that. The third characteristic was the eagle's commitment. They are a reliable mate and a devoted parent. A 2005 study tracked eagles and found not one adult strayed from its mate. And they, they followed them and they studied the feathers and, and things, but not one of them strayed from the mate. And usually among birds, they have multiple partners. They do not stay with one mate. That should motivate us to higher fidelity with Jesus Christ and our relationship with Him. And we should rise to the potential that we have in life when we lean on the Holy Spirit. The eagle's confidence during a storm when other birds are hiding in the rocks and the trees, the eagle takes to the air. The wind becomes the eagle's chariot, carrying them into the highest reaches of the sky. 
As an eagle Christian, we should also be confident in the face of storms. We should spread our wings of faith and soar into heights only the Father can propel us to. We have to have that help. Isaiah says of the eagle Christian, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That is the scripture right from Isaiah that we can go to. We have to be in the Lord. The situations, the cancer diagnosis, all those different things that come into our lives that challenge us. When the doctors say there's no more, no more that we can do, we have to trust in the Lord. He is the one who's going to sustain us. He is the one that's going to help us renew our strength. He's the one that's going to help us refresh ourselves and become what he wants us to be. And the fifth one is the eagle's companions. Many types of birds coexist in the same habitat, habitat, but not so for the eagle. The eagle lives apart from other birds. They stick to their own kind. And when they put eagles in a zoo with other birds in, the, in their habitat, they don't do well. Because eagles stick to their own kind. They can't hang around with others. They start acting like them. Did your parents ever tell you you become who you hang out with? You know, if you're hanging out with non-believers, you start acting like the non-believers. The eagle is the example of that. In Job 39, 27 to 28, he says, Does the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? It dwells on a cliff and, sta <clears throat> Excuse me. and stays there at night. A rocky crag is its stronghold. There was a farmer that found an eagle's nest and he took an egg out of that nest and he placed it under a hen. And it hatched with the brood of chickens that were hatched. <clears throat> and the farmer raised that eagle and took a lot of patience and a lot of time to, to raise that eagle up with the chickens. But the eagle never seemed to fit in in the, uh, in the chicken house. He walked alone and he never seemed to, to find his place and it just didn't feel at home because the farmer, the farmer had clipped his wings and he couldn't fly out. So he'd just walk around the chicken yard looking up, wondering what was going on. And one day a storm came and all the other animals were heading to the chicken house and into the barns and stuff and this eagle was still out there looking and he started spreading his wings and the farmer had not kept the wings clipped. And pretty soon there was a gust of wind and that, that eagle took off seeing another eagle in the sky never to look back. Sometimes we're like the chickens. We're content to stay in the chicken yard and in the chicken house when we should soar like the eagles. Are you ready to soar like an eagle? Because when you get that tired that you can't explain, maybe we need to be renewed in his strength. Monday, I went down and had an x-ray of my foot. Tuesday, the doctor's office called and said, well, it's not healing like it, they want it to. Wear that boot three more weeks and stay off of it and we'll see what it's doing then. 
wasn't really what I wanted to hear. We went by the bank the other day and Mary went into the bank and gave them a report when she was in there and, and Sue came out. But, you know, they were kind of surprised because I usually go in the bank. Mary's been going in, so they figured out that something was wrong and she came out to talk to me and she said, have you figured out what God's trying to teach you yet? And I said, no, I haven't. I haven't. But yesterday afternoon, I was sitting in a chair, uh, reading the Bible, doing some devotional time, and praying, and, and I'd, I'd worked on this message all week and had it complete, but I was there listening, and I thought, slow down. Slow down. That it was what I needed to do was just take some time. Because I would started a project over at Esther's. And when I start a project, I go until it's done. And every spare minute that I can get, I'll work on it. And somebody even said to me the other day, when I was sitting out front on Sunday morning, instead of standing up greeting people, said, don't very often see you sit down. And what I've figured out is, maybe that's not what God's telling me, but I think, I'm pretty sure that God is telling me I needed to slow down, to renew my strength, that I might be able to soar like an eagle. I don't know what God might be saying to you, but I know that God doesn't want us scratching around the chicken yard. He wants us to soar like an eagle. As a body, as individuals, as the body of Christ, as a church in this community. He wants us to soar like an eagle. If you'd take your hymnals and turn to number 